and well, Jen, I think I've got a super cool job too that I can't wait to tell all these guys about. Um, I'm a family doctor, and I also have the TV gig on CTV News in the afternoon. So what it means is that in the morning I see patients, and then in the afternoon I get to go down to the news station and put together a news segment on what kind of things are in the news that day, all related to science. And uh, we, we can talk about those kind of topics that happen every day and that I get to pick. But something that I always get asked about in the beginning is, um, you know, did you ever know you knew you wanted to be a doctor? Well, yeah, sort of. But, you know, you never hoped in your heart that you thought you could do that. And as you walk along outside now, especially you guys as students, you're outside looking at the emergency room and you've heard from anesthesiologists and you look at grossology from science world out there or body worlds and you think, wow, that is so cool, but how do I ever get there? And, you know, in your heart, do you think I could ever do it yourself? So, at there, I jotted down a few things I thought we could talk about to help you make up this decision and maybe help you kind of take those steps in getting to where you want to go. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I, I grew up in Vancouver, um, right in town. My parents lived just a, around the South, um, South Vancouver area on 49th and Main. And so I went to an elementary school that some of you guys might have gone to. It was called Van Horn. And a um, little elementary school. And, and I, was, I remember being in about grade three. And my best friend fell and skinned her knee. Well, oh my god. I mean, what are you going to do? And at that point, I thought, wow, this is really neat. She skinned her knee. That is so amazing. So, <laughs> I know. All right. Uh, so, I thought, this is really cool. I can help her. I know how to put on a Band-Aid. So, I thought, meanwhile, everybody else is saying, yeah. you know, she skinned her knee. But in, in that moment, it was something that I thought, that's interesting. That's, those are the kind of things that kind of comes to mind. It was that innate sense that you thought, wow, you can actually help somebody, and you want to give a hand in some way. That doesn't mean that you can be a doctor right then and there, but it sure gave you a thought or an inkling if you have that natural sense in you that, yeah, you know what, I want to give a helping hand. That's the first step that you want to go to. So then I went on and I went to high school and um, went to high school in town and went to Eric Hamburg. And I remember lectures coming to our, our lecturers coming and just like we have here, we have all these great professionals. We have folks like Jennifer who are doing really cool things. They've gone to school for lots of years and you think, oh, I don't know if I can do that either. And then you think science. Okay, that means I've got to do math. That means I've got to do biology. Oh my God, physics and chemistry. I'm not good at that. Well then, you know, and you think, I don't want to dissect that frog. If I dissect that frog, that means that's biology and that's health. And does health mean I have to dissect the frog and people all the time? It's not true. Because science is so much more than that. And science you can use every day in your life and your practice. So for example, when you go up in an airplane, aren't your ears killing you? Don't your ears pop? Okay. Well, that's science because it has to do with pressure and the way that the air expands in a small spot inside your ear canal. And it's neat to know those things because then you know why that's happening rather than just saying, oh, my ears are killing me, I can't figure out why and get scared about it. But if you know the underlying aspect about, yeah, the pressure's decreasing, so the air is expanding, and that's causing my eardrum to get a little bit bigger. Or how come I can't see as well? Why do I need to wear glasses? Well, that's science too because that's a little bit of physics. So that has to do with a lens and how when you focus a beam of light through that lens, depending on how thick that lens is, it falls short or it falls far. Well, that has to do with how come you're farsighted, how come you're nearsighted, and why you need to wear glasses. That's science. And that's what's so cool about it. How come when you eat certain foods, you cut up an avocado, and avocado turns black when you leave it to air too long. But if you put a little bit of lemon on top, it doesn't turn black. And so it's all these kind of neat things that make science so cool that you can use in your everyday life. So when you want to start out in a career in science, take some sciences because it just helps you find out more things around you and how things work. If you want to go into a career in science, then the, the most important thing is, is you just have to have an interest in how things work. Okay. How does that work? Isn't that cool? How does that work? And so if you're asking that question in your head, how does it work, then science is for you. 
because science will help you figure out how things work. And then we got to go into the health sciences, and everyone will say, well, I'm kind of shy. You know, I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to get out there. I don't want to touch people. Okay, I've had some people say that. Well, that doesn't mean that you have to do all of that in health science if you go into a career in health sciences. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So, I'll go back. So, here I am in high school, and I'm hearing doctors talk about getting there, and I'm thinking, I'm not smart enough. I'm not going to be able to do it. And I don't want to go to school for all these years. But what I'm saying is that just plug along and take your sciences in high school because you might find something that really grabs you. If you like it, you're interested, it won't seem like work. It'll be exciting every day. So, and don't worry if you don't think you're smart enough because if you like something, you'll be good at it. You'll be good at it. So you just keep plugging away at it and it'll work. And so I had these thoughts, I wasn't smart enough to get into medical school, I hope, I hope, I hope. But I didn't know at the time that I would want to. I also knew that I thought I'd like to teach because it's nice to be able to understand something and then to be able to explain it to someone else. So I thought, oh, it'd be great to be a teacher. So maybe a science teacher. So it was those ideas as a high school student that you think, okay, I'm getting some ideas and you're moving along. So I'm not saying you have to make the decision right now when you're in grade 8, 9, or 10 what you need to do or else your career path has to be chosen and your life will be miserable at that point. It's a work in progress. You just keep knowing yourself a little bit more, what you like, the kind of person that you are, and you just keep on moving along with what you like to do. So then I went to university. I, I, I knew that I wanted to do something in sciences because I thought biology was interesting apart from dissecting that frog. Okay, so there was a little more to it. Um, we, uh, in, in biology at UBC, what we did was we um, went to Stanley Park and we looked at the ducks and geese in Stanley Park. And all of a sudden, you got to understand what kind of ducks are out there, why they live the way they do, and why they live here and they don't live in South America. It's those kind of things that seemed a little interesting. And you think, okay, that's a far cry from people. You know, it's more so than that from being a doctor. But it, still, it was a little bit in the health sciences because you got to understand a little bit about how the birds might actually interact with people and people who take care of birds. And like Jennifer was saying, how, how SARS and how all of those diseases got into the general public. So science is very broad-reaching when you get to look into all these areas. So I decided that I liked the idea of how chemistry worked with biology. So I thought that I'd be interested in being a pharmacist because pharmacy is about drugs and how those drugs interact in the body is a chemical reaction. So I did that. I went into pharmacy for a year. Sort of decided that I really hated it. It wasn't for me. Decided that, oh, you know what, I don't really like chemistry that much in the end. Um, and what, why I decided that was because pharmacy is a little bit more chemistry and a little less biology. But it took me a little while to get to that part to figure that out. Um, I realized that I was more interested in cells and how things interacted in the body. So then I went and, and I went back to science and I became, um, I went into cell biology and molecular biology. And part of that, and I thought that I was a shy person and I wasn't some type of person who wanted to be out there that I'd like to maybe work in a lab to try it out to get to plug along with my science. Look at my cells in my petri dish, which were very exciting to see them grow and divide. And because I thought that I'd like to move into some area where people might be involved, I went into uh, working with a scientist at UBC who did cancer research. And she looked into how cancer cells affected people and how certain drugs might interact with cancer cells. So the theme is sort of there. You can see that, okay, I was interested in drugs and chemistry and biology, but I still wasn't sure yet. So then I went into this area of cancer research while I was an undergraduate at UBC, and I wanted to do some work with cells, looking under a microscope, seeing them magnified, taking pictures of these cells. So cool. You could get these magnifying glasses that kind of blew up these cells, and they looked like pterodactyls, and they looked like these great big giant amoeba crawling across your screen because they were so magnified. And then someone asked me, well, that's great you're doing this kind of work. So when's it going to cure cancer? Or when's it going to help my grandma, 
who's got cancer right now. And I thought about that and I thought, you know what? Um, I don't know. I don't know when that might happen because we're still at the very preliminary phases of how cancer research can work. So then, I, there's another little ding like bulb as you go on in your career. So that's sort of how you think about it. I don't want to do something in my life that's only maybe just not going to happen right now to help someone because I still liked putting that band-aid on that person with a skid knee when I was eight years old. So, yeah, I, got, I like to see results now. I like, I, I'm the type of person like, fix it, let's do it right now. So I thought, well, you know what, the only way that I thought maybe that would happen would be to go into medical school. Because if in medical school you learn your science, you learn a little bit about chemistry, you learn a little bit about the drugs, you learn about biology without dissecting the frog, about how your ears pop, you learn how to maybe help fix things right now in many cases. That's what brought me to medicine in a full circle. And at that point, again, it wasn't a direct goal towards medicine, but it was a work in process of knowing what you like and what you don't like as you go along the way. Still, though, with that science theme in mind, because science is still so cool, and because you can, you can learn along each step of the way. So then it's a work in process. You're in medical school and you learn all these cool things, uh, and you see them outside, and you decide where you want to go. And, and how did I decide to be a family doctor? You heard from, we've had other talks here, if you guys haven't been here um, during the course of the last couple of days. There have been an anesthesiologist here talking to people, and that's the guy who puts people to sleep. He passes gas, we say. So this is a guy who passes a gas. Okay, so he came and talked to you guys. Um, and there will be other doctors who talk to you. And, and Jennifer was here. She has a PhD uh, in genetics, and she talked to you about that. Well, after you have become a doctor, then you can decide what kind of doctor you want to be. And so I decided I want to pass gas too. And so I decided to do anesthesiology because again, the chemistry and the drug interaction in the body and the fact that I like to do things with my hands. I, I'm a very procedural oriented person. I like to sew. I like to sew. I like to do things. So anesthesiology let me do those kind of procedures and things. But, okay, I did that for a year. It was the coolest thing in the whole world in the operating room. You put people to sleep. During an operation, they're totally asleep, and the operation goes on, and then you wake them all up again, and they talk to you, and they'll say, hey, when's my operation going to begin? And you think, well, it's done. But it's so cool that they didn't even know it. But where I figured that part out was, you know what? That's the only time I get to talk to my patient. It's when they wake up and when they go to sleep. The rest of the time, nobody talks to you. And I thought, well, this isn't cool. I mean, I'm the type of person, as you can tell right now, I like to talk. So, and I like people to talk back to me. And I like to have a little interaction with things. So I thought, oh, you know, I don't think anesthesia is for me either because everybody's asleep all day, every day. So that wasn't my career path as well either when I figured out how, what I liked and what I didn't like. Family medicine is the funnest thing in the whole world. Because for me, every five minutes, every ten minutes, the topic changes. So somebody might come in with a sore finger, and then one minute later or two minutes later, somebody else has had a heart attack. Okay. Ten minutes later after that, someone's really sick with a cough and a cold, and they've got pneumonia. And then half an hour after that, someone's broken their leg. So. It's a different topic every few minutes, and that's for me. I, I like that change. I like that variety. Um, that's why some people like to work in the emergency department because, man, it is hectic in there, and they love that excitement. Okay. It's a little too exciting for me. But I do like the fact that every 10 minutes to half an hour, everything changes every single day. There are other doctors who like to solve problems, take more time at it, sit down and they get an hour to solve one problem that has to do with the lungs or one problem that has to do with a muscle. Those are the specialists that you'll hear about. Those are people who fix broken bones all day. They might try to figure out why your heart isn't working properly. But there again, what I'm saying is that once, once you make a decision to go into a career, it's not cast in stone. 